So as a trader, if you hear someone talking about uh, multi time frame analysis, uh, it's simply one using uh, one having to look at uh, different uh, time frames and particularly or to be specific, you need to have at least a, a certain uh, category of uh, time frames. For example, the first category should be giving you direction. You need, you cannot be in the market when you know the direction you're looking for or the direction you want to trade in. So you need to have a time frame that gives you direction. Then secondly, you need to have a time frame where you're getting the structure to trade. Uh, you see, uh, for example, a human being, someone who is slim, someone who is tall, short, uh, medium, whatever the size, uh, what makes up uh, that uh, size is the what we call the, 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 the skeleton. Now, the skeleton is like what gives you the structure. Now, also in the market, we we need something called structure that is going to give us what we are going to trade. On top of the direction, I think you're hearing the order in which I'm coming. So first you give, uh, you get direction. Secondly, the structure. So you first get direction and the structure gives you what to trade. Then thirdly, the entry, uh, the entry time frame category. Now, the fourth one is a minor. I've always mentioned this. It's not so important, but it could be of an advantage in case you, you're someone who focuses so much on uh, risk to add ratio, right? Which is very key in the game, of course. Uh, uh, it could be a very key part for you. Now, uh, having understood that, uh, you need to first categorize the time frames, or you need to choose the time frames that uh, that you want to use. For example, for us, we use monthly, weekly, and daily in the same category. These are the structure time frames. This is for direction. These are the structure time frames. Then H1 and H4, we use them for for time frames, right? So these are the ones that we use now. It's uh, it's uh, up to you to choose the one that you want. Some of you want to start your your analysis from H4. Sorry, to get your direction from H4, then you use H1 and mean at 30 as structure time frames. Then you start taking uh, your entries from uh, mean at 15 and mean at 5. That is your choice. I just want you guys to get the technique or the, to understand the rules to, uh, to how we do top-down analysis. Then everything will be okay. We have done it a couple of times. Uh, but of course, to be good at something, you need to do it over and over. Now, those past videos will, uh, will of course, uh, just learning the rules to the to how we trade. But now, most of you, of course, must be knowing. So now we're just implementing or doing them in the in doing analysis together, right? So uh, let's start off. So I'm going to start off by use, use, using USDJPY because I've been following it. Actually, USDJPY is almost confirming. Let's do something. Let's first start with something that already confirmed. Uh, that is the New Zealand JPY. I've talked about these ones in the past. Just type in New Zealand JPY, USD JPY, you'll see we have been following up these uh, setups using the same knowledge that I share with you guys here. So let's start with uh, New Zealand JPY. Where is it? It's down here. Uh, so let me just clear everything. Don't mind about this. It already confirmed from down here, but we're going to come back to that. So as usual, we have said we're starting from monthly. Guys, please do not cram these time frames. Um, this is just what I, I trade and my team. And also I recommend it because remember, the market makers are not making decisions for one minute, two minutes, uh, hours, or just a day. These guys are making decisions based on what is going to happen for a long period of time. You're getting it. So that's why I advise at least have a bigger time frame in your in your analysis, either daily or weekly. If weekly and monthly are so big, monthly is for big way for direction, at least have daily H4, right? Do not start from minute 30, minute 15. It's too tiny. You're not going to be consistent over time. I know people could be doing it, but it comes with experience. After you trade it for some time, then you can zero down when you've mastered the rules. These time frames just you, you switch. The things that happen in them are the same, but the experience takes time to get, right? So without wasting time, monthly, we can see that the market broke above this significant turning point here. I like using uh, blue or red in uh, the bigger time frames. So uh, we, we can clearly observe that this was the resistance. The market was rejected. A resistance the market the, the price of course attempted to create a high here which it failed to close above so it clo came and closed inside making this a very strong resistance now of course you don't ignore that high you can just mark it like this we shall adjust it later now the price finally uh, last month broke above now this month today is just i think 60th we started by coming to retest usual practice after there's a break we expect a retest let's see if weekly agrees our first structure time frame now weekly is of course, agreeing. Why? Because we do have a big W. We had a small one here, retested it, and now we went. So this is a big W. And what do we say after when there's a W? We say the rule of a W is when there's a W, we expect price to come back and retest the neckline. Then we continue that to make double tops or lower high or higher high, any of them. 
So meaning also weekly agrees. And of course, we had support. Monthly is saying that we have touched support. We need to be looking for buys. For That's a buy direction. Weekly is saying we're at a neckline of a W. We're supposed to be looking for buys. Are you getting it? So the first structure agrees. So if you trade the weekly structure, you must be looking for buys. Let's check the daily structure if it agrees. Daily structure also agrees. Why? Because we did have the market testing this with this weak momentum. Then we broke above, breaking this point here. So meaning that, Actually, someone may look at it like we have this inverse head and shoulders and we had to come test these uh, levels that were not tested, right? So the market did that. So currently we are crossing above this area, so we may have a weak pullback before we continue to this level here. So also Dele agrees that, hey, uh, there's a possibility we may do what we may we are buying. And of course, you can see it's already reacting to this. So you can just add this slight level above here that the market has just broken. Uh, right, I'm just going to remove this so that my chart is very clean. Or you can leave it there because sometimes the market can use it to manipulate. So we shall just expect a pull, a weak pullback here. Then we can be targeting this level here. So monthly saying a buy, and then the structure time frame of weekly agrees, the structure time frame of daily agrees. So what is left is for you to go and check for change of trend. Now, like I already mentioned, New Zealand JPO they confirmed from the first support. You clearly see this was a very strong level of support, and the market gave us a weak momentum coming back down. Now, we changed trend from around here. Very nice entry. It's running about some good pips. Now, I've missed it. So what I'm going to be waiting for is a pullback, a weak pullback into this area before I can go. I missed it because I was not focused. I didn't, uh, uh, I, I was engaged with some other things. So that's how I missed it, right? So I'm not in this trade, this one here. But I'm hopeful that it will give us some pullback into this hidden structure here, which is aligning with this level. Nicely, then we can be targeting this, right? So those who trade New Zealand JPY, I hope you have seen how we do a top-down analysis. It's not hard uh, while you're keeping your chart very neat. Of course, we expect this to go higher because we're in an uptrend. We expect it to go higher, but for now we don't want to guess, right? Of course, we have this thing that is narrowing down, so we don't want to guess. We go, Let's go step by step. When we break this high, we shall expect a retest like that. When we break this high like that, let's not try to over-anticipate something in the future. We, we, we don't have uh, inside information. So let's just trade what the market is showing us step by step. So this is one example how you can do a clean top-down analysis. It's not very hard. Of course, I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy because you need to practice it. Uh, you, you, when I'm doing it, it may seem easy. But uh, when you're practicing over and over, so it will be good on your side. Now let's go to the one that has not yet confirmed, which is almost confirming. And it's almost like uh, New Zealand JPY, which is USD JPY. Now, we have spoken about USDJPY, I think, for I don't know how many years. These are the pairs that uh, if you're really serious about trading, you must have it on your watch list. Because when it is following price action, it is really, really, really easy to spot it out. For example, I spoke about this level that, that the market is supposed to was meant to break above uh, because of the pressure of the buyers here and how the market closed the other two months ago. And you can see the previous month closed above. Then we, when there's a breakout, what we expect, a retest. It's currently what we are doing. So meaning that the, the direction here is upwards, right? Are we together? Then let's check if the first structure agrees. That's the weekly structure. So when I got the weekly structure, the weekly structure agrees. Why? Why is that? Because we do have a market creating a high, higher low, high. Then also we have this high here into this area here that we have marked in uh, in the monthly time frame. And also we had the market, sell them sellers trying to come into the market here, retest this area here, meaning that we have some turning point here that was not retested that the market currently is testing. So the market broke a resistance. Let me just uh, repeat that. The market had this resistance like this, then broke it in monthly. Now weekly is showing us that, hey, uh, current and the monthly also came and retested and is here. Also weekly is saying that we have a high, Higher low, high, so we are currently here. Meaning weekly and monthly are communicating the same thing. So uh, when we go down to the daily time frame, what do we observe? The daily time frame, we observe that it's actually also the same thing. Now, someone will say, but there's this uh, uh, level here that the market created. Yes, there's an area here that is a very big threat and currently the price is below it, which you have to be very careful about. Now, why am I saying careful? Because let me just, let me just reduce, let me just remove this so that, let me just reduce this so that it can make much more sense. So that's not so big. Why am I saying that it's a very big threat? Because when the price was going up here, let me just show you here. Like I hope you guys can see the size of the candle. The market created 
This was a resistance. The market broke it, retested it, right? Then we broke above. We never tested this point. Then when we went up, we have we have a hidden structure. Then also we have a presence of sellers building a wall here. Now the price had to come and re, the price tested and reacted. This alone was a confirmation that we we are supposed to come and retest any untested level. So currently this area here has been tested. Now what next if the area has been tested? If you want, you can mark it. And let me just uh, remove this so it's small. If you want, you can leave it there as the market makers sometimes use it as manipulation levels. So also we have a hidden structure here that you can use, right? So this level has been tested. Now currently we are breaking above this. So what I'm expecting is the market to give us a retest here, right? Like I've said, this one is just going to confirm. When it comes here, it reacts a bit. It can either come to this level to create double bottoms, or even it can come and create lower double bottoms with this one here. But what you what we're interested in is watching how it approaches. Either coming down here, or when it is retesting this level here with a weak momentum, when it switches again to break the last lower high, then we can be looking for buys. Are we together? So uh, where do we expect this one to be uh, headed first? Because in weekly, it came and retested this point, so I expect it to hit this level, right? When we come down to daily, daily we're now doing, I mean by intraday. Intraday, remember, I'm not trading for, for very long now. Intraday, those who quote it from here, I don't, personally, the way I trade, I would not have caught it from there, right? Let me just go slightly to H4. Why I'm saying that is I do not just trade candlestick patterns like bullish engulfing inside bar. I trade structure uh, and moving from level to level. So uh, you can clearly see that the market made a low lower high it made a new low here lower high then a low then now we have a market that is currently just crossing above this area and has retested here so if you're a scalper and the rest that's why i'm saying uh, from daily at least you should have a those who are trading uh small ranges or small intervals daily is very key for you to see uh things daily use at least daily and h4 now here you can clearly see that we're above this area here and we can be moving from this level to this level. If the level reacts a bit, that's when I'm going to be interested. That's why when we're starting, I said this one is just going to confirm. So what I want to see is the market touching this area and reacting. Then as it comes down, I'll be interested in this movement to take my move up to that level that we have marked up there. If it aggressively goes up, then I'll be interested in it breaking above, come react to this area or this high here. When a weak retest, right? Then I'll be interested in going. But, uh, this video is not so much focusing on the entry part or change of trend. I only just first focus so much on uh, uh, so much on how you align these time frames, like from monthly, uh, weekly, and daily, because that's where problems come in and people uh, fail to understand how to connect them. I really hope this was a bit simpler, and uh, when you practice, to be very easy. I know when I'm doing it, you may say, "Ah, these things are so easy," but to connect them sometimes is a bit challenging. And uh, for that case, in case you have any questions or something that is not very clear, uh, particularly in this video or any other video, kindly comment below. And also do not forget to subscribe if you just come across the video. And also give us the like so that many people can come across. Have a great time.